Hey there, it's Brent Rose, and I am testing out the new Sony RX100 Mark 7. Indeed I am, and this is my test footage to go along with my written review. So this is the seventh generation of Sony's very high-end point-and-shoot camera. It's small enough to fit in the palm of your hand or the pocket of your jacket, and it's got a one-inch sensor that can shoot 20.1 megapixel photos or 4K 30 video. And it has a 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent zoom on it. Um, and you can see that in action here. Uh, video in general looks really sharp, but they've definitely added some features to the seventh generation to make it especially appealing to vloggers, including Sony's industry leading IAF, uh, which tracks your eye autofocus even in video mode. Uh, we've seen this on their higher end cameras like the A9 and the A7R Mark IV, but uh, this is the first time it's come to a small compact camera like this, and it's a pretty stellar feature. You can see really quickly switching between my eyes. Very good. That same technology can be used for tracking fast moving objects like this car, and generally it works really well. I'd say images look really good coming straight out of the camera without any tweaking at all, as long as the lighting is decent. For those who don't mind doing some work in post to give their footage a certain look, uh, the camera does support picture profiles. So this is picture profile off. This is what it looks like just coming straight out of the camera. Uh, and in general, I think it looks pretty good for, for most people. And this is picture profile one, which is supposed to give it its most cinematic look. And this is straight out of the camera. I haven't done any tweaking to it at all. <laughs> You'll see there's a line on my forehead from uh, from my wetsuit hood, but uh, you can just ignore that. Anyway, this is just a very easy way to give you kind of a warmer, uh, softer sort of filmic look without doing any work in post. Now, this is Picture Profile 7, which uses the S-Log2 gamut, and a lot of filmmakers really like S-Log2. It's very, very flat. I find it really hard to work with, and especially on a camera that's only shooting 8-bit video and only has a 1-inch sensor, the minimum ISO is 800, and you can see there's a lot of noise in the shadows. It's also pretty hard to color correct. Some people love it. It's not really for me. This is Picture Profile 10 using the HLG2 gamut, which is basically made for HDR video. I actually find it really pretty easy to work with. Uh, it's got a much lower native ISO, and uh, colors are generally a little bit more natural, a little bit poppier, um, and I just generally really like the look of this video a lot. So uh, this is uh, also Picture Profile 10, but with HLG3, which has a little bit more dynamic range, but sometimes introduces a little more noise. Uh, again, here it's pretty decent, but one of these HLG profiles is what you would use if you're wanting to make your video HDR in the end. Basically, these are nice options to have if you're an aspiring pro or semi-pro. Just bear in mind that with 8-bit video, the colors are only going to be so flexible. You push and pull, uh, and eventually things will start falling apart pretty hard. Uh, you'll also see a fair amount of noise at the higher ISOs, but uh, I, I generally found the footage not too terrible to work with, uh, especially, again, HLG2, which I just thought delivered a, a really nice mix of flat colors and dynamic range. The camera also shoots slow motion built in natively. This is 1080 240 FPS. Now you can only shoot that in four second bursts. So you have to have your timing pretty right. You can choose start trigger, middle trigger, end trigger. Uh, but in general, uh, it, it looks really good. It can go up to higher frame rates, but the quality drops through the floor at that point. I would say this camera does okay in low light. So it's got a one inch sensor, which means it's gonna outperform your phone and it's gonna outperform a GoPro, but it's gonna fall noticeably short compared to a micro four thirds, an APS-C or a full frame sensor. So both of these first two shots were shot at ISO 4000 and you can see a fair amount of noise in there, but I would call these usable. Maybe not for a short film or anything, but certainly for Instagram or YouTube. Uh, part of the problem here is that the maximum aperture is f2.8 on this camera. Previous versions of it uh, could do f1.8, uh, but it would sacrifice zoom. Personally, I would rather have less zoom in f1.8. Uh, these last two shots are ISO 6400, and you see a fair amount of noise in here. Maybe you could clean it up, but it'd be tricky. Probably the most requested feature from vloggers has been the addition of a microphone input, and finally this year they added one. Uh, unfortunately, there's no place on the camera to actually hold the microphone, so you have to use a shooting grip, and that's the Sony stereo mic that I've uh, attached to it. But uh, this is what it sounds like. There we go. This is a vlogger setup. I've got the external mic on right now, standing back about four feet. Um, is that four feet? Yeah, four or five feet. How did 
I sound? How do I sound if I back up a little bit more? I'm talking like this. Is this okay? How does it isolate the outside sound of the cars going by? And how about if I get closer, now I'm about two feet away. Hello? I'm talking now? What do you think? Okay, now the external mic is not plugged in, so about the same distance here, just talking with you, normal vloggy voice, hello, hello. How's it sound? We're picking up more ambient sound. I back up a little bit more. How do I sound now? If I'm a little bit further back, what does it sound like? And then of course, if we get nice and close, now I'm about two feet away, to bend down a little bit to get in there. But yeah, how does that sound? All right. I also tested it with my wireless Sennheiser lavalier kit, so you can hear that. Okay, now we're back with the lavalier mic right here. Um, how do I sound now? I probably sound pretty good. Now the decibels are turned down to 10. They were really peaking before. But it should... Yeah, so that sounds fantastic, but it does bring up an interesting point. There is no headphone jack on the camera. There's a mic jack, but no headphone jack. So you can't monitor your sound at all, and you can't go back and really review to make sure it sounded good, it wasn't peaking. Uh, you can look at the, the waveforms, but that's all you got. And uh, that really feels like a miss because uh, audio is just so important. The other thing that's a little bit of a disappointment is image stabilization. Now, this camera does have it, but it's not fantastic. It crops 10% of the frame, and even then, you can see it really shakes a lot. So it doesn't look so bad here, but this is, like you saw, a very nice gentle walk, and it's still very bumpy. So I'd call that a loss, especially when little cameras like GoPro are doing it so much better now. Overall, this camera packs an impressive amount of features into a very small body. Uh, image quality and bright sunlight is really excellent, and it does a really good job with photos too. Uh, the price is really, really high though, so uh, I'm not totally sure that it's going to be worth it for everybody. But regardless, check out my full review over at The Verge, which goes into a lot more detail. Thanks for watching.